Hello, and welcome to Aspects of Abraham 25. The story of Abraham, from which we can learn and, and grow and be encouraged. That's always good, isn't it? So, we'd left Abraham in a state of um, distress because he'd had to let Agar and Ishmael, his son, go. The Lord had spoken to him um, and uh, said, Do not be distressed. That is in Genesis 21, 21. Um, 12 that's it <laughs> Genesis 21 12 <laughs> okay so the Lord said to Abraham do not be distressed and that's hard isn't it sometimes because we're having to trust God the Lord knows the end from the beginning uh, but we don't um, he knows what the outcome will be but we are wondering, Lord, what's going to happen here? How is this working out? And and trust and obedience is what we learn here from Abraham. Abraham was obedient. He let Ishmael and Hagar go. And he took it to his heart not to be distressed, but to trust in God. And also... We have the same told us in John 14, verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, said Jesus. So, do not let your hearts be troubled. We, we don't think of that as a command, do we? We think, that's just oh, it's just a nice thing that Jesus said. But it's a command. Do not let your hearts be troubled troubled so uh, we ought to take it as a command and and say lord i'm sorry because sometimes i i do let my heart be troubled and it shows that we're a lack of trust in the lord and that's not good is it we need to trust in the lord in all circumstances so abraham had let ishmael and hagar go and they were starting their own family unit and they would grow into a nation the Lord had um, deemed it so and and so we can see that they went further south and the Bible says they went to the area of um, Paran Abraham was still in the south of Canaan um, in Beersheba but um, Hagar and Ishmael lived southeast of Abraham in the desert of Paran, where Ishmael quickly learned how to use his skill as a hunter. So we can see here, uh, there's Beersheba, where Abraham was, and you can see it's on that route, the way to Shur. If you keep going on the way to Shur, it leads to the ridge route, all the way up to Jerusalem and further north. And Beersheba is the furthest town south in Israel, or Canaan as it was then. We, we sometimes read from Dan to Beersheba. And Beersheba um, was, the, was the end of the agricultural cultivated land. After that we get the Negev there. Um, and further down, we get uh, the wilderness of Paran. Although there is some dispute about where it is exactly. But it seems to be just north of the Sinai Peninsula. And that's where Hagar and Ishmael seemed to spend their time there. So... Once Abraham had got settled with um, the, the situation, um, life seems to be moving along smoothly for Abraham. After all, he's got Isaac now, and his heart is blessed with love 
for his son Isaac. And he, he wants to teach him and to bring him up in, in the nurture of, of the Lord. And so Abraham had um, Abimelech as a neighbor nearby, and they got on well together with each other. That was what the well uh, was named after beer, meaning well. Sheba means oath or seven, because Abraham sacrificed seven animals when they um, dug the well. So um, everything seems to be running smoothly, and the Lord is revealing himself more and more to Abraham. He now knows that God is the everlasting God. That's the last title that Abraham used for God. And so we would think now, we would think everything is going to go smoothly. He's got his promised son, Isaac. He's got Sarah, his wife there. And surely everything's going to run smoothly now in an unbroken chain of... of uh, you know pastoral beauty right to the end of Abraham's days but it's not so things were about to change and like a lightning bolt out of the blue the Lord suddenly spoke to Abraham and God prepares us for the trials that will come our way and we don't even realize that we're being prepared for it abraham immediately said here i am so we know that he will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it because something was coming to Abraham here now, something tough, hard. But the Lord was going to lead him through this. Trials reveal to us that God has confidence in us. Have we, have we ever thought about it that way? We trust God, and sometimes God puts his trust in us because God had something to do here. He wanted to show the world something and Abraham had to be obedient for God to put this into effect. Small trials come our way and they help us with the larger trials that we face. We are taught to run with the footmen before contending with horses as God told Jeremiah. Do you remember that? The Lord, Jeremiah was complaining to the Lord saying, Lord, What's going on? And and the Lord said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, if you're getting tired running with the footmen, how are you going to get on when you contend with horses? And and that's a, a lesson that we, we get. Sometimes the Lord says to us, strengthen those feeble knees that give way. Be strong. God is with us. And he wants us to be strong. He wants us to be obedient. Jeremiah had to do it. And now Abraham has to be obedient. Now Abraham had already had his fair share of trials. And this is what we read in Genesis 22 verse 1. It came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham. So, this is a test that we're facing now. Now, Abraham had actually been waiting for the Lord to visit for quite some time. Um, but we don't read that the Lord did visit, but we do read that he heard the voice of the Lord. And, and Abraham knew Yahweh's voice. We ought to also, or shouldn't we? my sheep know my voice and Abraham was familiar with God's voice and um, too familiar to mistake it so what one of the features of Genesis and and this is what God was doing here with Abraham one of the features of Genesis is to tell a story 
through another story, through he tells a larger story through a smaller story. And we see this often throughout the Bible. And people use Genesis as a um uh, a, a springboard for the gospel. We see it in the story of Joseph, don't we? Often used in, in gospel uh, sermons. And Abraham too. And th and this is what was happening here. We're, we're going to be told a smaller story that will um, throw a lot of light on a larger story that God is interested in. God is interested in the larger story. Do you remember in the last video we talked about the way um, David had um, a disloyal and treacherous friend, Ahithophel. And we saw that Ahithophel was like Judas, who was disloyal and uh, treacherous to Jesus. Well, Ahithophel, um, after he'd given advice to, to Absalom, he went out and hung himself, just like Judas did. Judas went out and hung himself. So we see in the smaller story with David and Ahithophel, the larger story of Judas Iscariot betraying Jesus. And, and this is important for us to grasp. In the Old Testament, we see these smaller stories telling a larger story. So when we read the Old Testament, take a step back and have a good look because often there is a bigger picture in, involved here. And dramas unfold in Genesis. Um, and we realize that we've seen a parallel. Scenarios through which God teaches us. So Abraham knew Yahweh well enough to trust him implicitly by now. Um, but did he know God's propensity for putting on a drama, a story, a story being told through another story? This is why obe obedience was very important. Now, Abraham had to be obedient in every way because the Lord said to Abraham, take your son. Ooh. This sounds serious. Remember, Abraham hadn't got the full picture here what was going on. But later in the Bible, we read that God asked, would ask Ezekiel to act out some bizarre scenes for his audience to watch. And Abraham was about to take part in a play where he would be one of the main characters. God said to him, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Now what did God mean here? Take your only son, Abraham had another son, Ishmael. Isaac wasn't his only son. But this was all part of the drama that was unfolding. This was the script. Abraham was playing the part of God. And God only has one begotten son. Abraham, at that time, didn't know it was a play being acted out, or at least he wasn't sure what was going on. But we know he trusted God enough to raise Isaac back from the dead and knew that God had power to do that. So, we read a little bit later in Genesis 26 that God's commendation of Abraham was Abraham obeyed me. What a, what a wonderful commendation from the Lord. Can the Lord say that about us? Um, 
Samuel said, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed better than the fat of rams. We read that in 1 Samuel 15, 22. By faith, when God tested him, Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. That's what we read in Hebrews eleven seventeen to 19. So, Abraham, Isaac, and two servants set out early in the morning. So Abraham was straight on the case. No delay. Total obedience. God's directive was issued to Abraham alone. Let's note that Sarah was probably still in bed by the time um, Abraham had set out. Um, he, he knew he'd got a job to do here and he got on with it. Um, so Sarah would probably have been um, in the dark about this situation. And so four of them, the, a quartet, set out on their way. Abraham, Isaac, two servants. So as far as people knew, if they did know at all, if Abraham had told them, they were going on a trip to build an altar and sacrifice to God, somewhere close to where Melchizedek lived. And, and building altars, um, it had been a family tradition. It wasn't a strange thing, although it wasn't done too often. But it was a family tradition since Adam. So it, it, it wasn't a strange thing for them to do. But Sarah, if she knew anything about it or, at all, may have wondered why. Why now? Why are you taking Isaac away? So it's good for us to just think of it from Sarah's perspective for, for a moment because she knew nothing about this. Okay, so... The, the region of Moriah, um, it's about 60 miles or 93.4 kilometers, Google Maps says, to be precise. <laughs> and you can see it follows the ridge route there. That would be the route that Abraham took with the two servants and Isaac. It was about three days' journey. Uh, it's, a, it's a good good journey. Um, and the region of Moriah, we know it's a, around Jerusalem. Um, so Abraham, he knew that region well. Um, he'd moved along the north-south ridge pathway of the Judean hills several times before. So let's just have a look about Mount Moriah. How do we know where it is? Well, Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah. So we have it explained to us, 2 Chronicles 3.1. And there's an, a nice map there of the ridge route of the Judean hills. There's um, Beersheba's down here, it's just off this, just a bit further south in this map. Um, there's, there's the ridge route and past Hebron, past Je Bethlehem, to Jerusalem. So he would pass his old town of Mamre and then head further north to where he'd met Melchizedek, the, who was the uh, high, uh, the priest of God at Salem, which became Jerusalem. 
uh, they camped overnight twice on the journey and um, during the second night it was would have been then that God gave the final instructions of which mountain exactly to head for because on the third day they reached the area of Moriah and Abraham knew exactly where to go so the script Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac so we we can see the parallel there can't we um, the servants had stayed at the campsite and Abraham and Isaac were by themselves and walked to the exact location that God had pointed out to Abraham so Isaac carries the wood um, which ties in with Jesus carrying his wooden cross which would happen in the same area just over 1800 years later and this is the script and Abraham followed it to the letter we read in the Gospels um, because we, we see that the servants had stayed at the campsite uh, to look on there were four of them weren't there four witnesses to this two servants Abraham and Isaac four and we have four witnesses don't we the Gospels we have four witnesses Matthew Mark Luke and John who witnessed the situation and tell us about this situation here that is being played out in a drama in the life of Abraham so we read that faithful women looked on from afar just like the servants did the, the women were good servants of the Lord and would often uh, help feed the the disciples and um, and support them in, in a monetary way so we read in Mark 15 40 some women were watching from a distance among them were Mary Magdalene Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome these faithful women now they stood by the cross of Jesus his mother his his mother's sister Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene so, so we we get a picture here the servants looked on at what was going on and Jesus went willingly to the cross and at the moment we can see Isaac also went willingly um, Abraham had kept quiet about what what was taking place and he even had a chance to tell Isaac because um, his son Isaac um, asked where the animal was um, he, you know he said we've got the wood father where is the um, animal that we're going to sacrifice and we see here Jesus also walking to the cross um, Isaac at this point w was he didn't know exactly what was going on um, and we read that Jesus was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent so he did not open his mouth Jesus went willingly to the cross <clears throat> excuse me so um, Abraham gave Isaac the cryptic reply that God would provide himself a lamb and that w that was cryptic but it, it was a serious meaning to that and n now we know that Isaac was was bound on the 
altar here. Um, and the fact that Isaac was was bound um, tells us that Isaac himself probably didn't, when he got to the stage, he, he realized what was going on. He, he, he wasn't going uh, meekly. Jesus went meekly, but perhaps Isaac didn't because Isaac had to be bound to the wood and the altar just like um, Jesus was bound to the cross, wasn't he? Fixed by nails. Um, so, and, and, and as Isaac spoke to Abraham on his way to this sacrifice, Jesus also spoke. And we see the humanity of Jesus talking to his father, saying, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. We see the humanity of Christ. Yet not as I will, he said, but as you will. So Jesus truly did go willingly. But we're not so sure about Isaac. We're not told about the, the final stages here. But I, Abraham was a strong man. Um, his family line had inherited length of years and strength. Isaac was a young man, maybe a teenager. Abraham would be able to overpower him, bind him, and place him on the altar. There may have been a, a bit of a scuffle, with Isaac screaming out and dust and dirt being flung into the air. But Abraham prevailed, and Isaac was placed on the altar, bound. Abraham felt around his waistband for the knife and got hold of it to get the job done. Suddenly, a loud voice came from heaven calling to Abraham uh, calling Abraham's name twice just in case he didn't hear it the first time because maybe Isaac was crying uh, and and the voice was loud and it's 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 not a, a shouting voice here the Hebrew word is used when um, a proclamation is made. We, we, we don't get to hear of Jesus shouting either. We, we sometimes hear Jesus said in a loud voice, but God is always uh, calm and, and so is Christ. So a loud voice from heaven came. Abraham stopped in his tracks and said, here I am. He was then told not to lay a hand on the boy. He had proved his willingness to obey God and not withheld his only son, the only son of Abraham and Sarah. We are immediately reminded of the most famous verse in the New Testament, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, although this was a serious trial for Abraham, it did not last long. It only lasted a few days. Um, the three, three days journey from Beersheba to Mount Moriah and Jesus had the cross didn't he but the resurrection came three days later so we do have trials to go through sometimes but praise God with every trial God is there with us and he wants obedience from us that's important because um, God is doing something here. If Abraham had have been an unwilling party to this, we would never have got to see the bigger picture being told in a smaller way. And that was what God wanted to do. The Lord said, I've got a story here, Abraham. I need to tell it, and I want to tell it through you, with your son. Because th this is going to happen in a bigger way a much bigger way and it means salvation for the world this is really important 
So how important it was that Abraham was obedient here. And, and we praise God that he was because we see the bigger picture of the Lord Jesus um, and the sacrifice that our Heavenly Father made on our behalf that through the blood of Jesus Christ our sin, our spot may be forgiven. So praise God for his goodness to us. Okay. So that was Abra Aspects of Abraham 25. We'll be moving on because there's some more yet in this story. So on Sunday we'll investigate it a little bit further. Um, it's good for us, isn't it, to really delve into these scriptures. And, you know, not, not just to read them and skimp over them, but to get all the goodness well not all the goodness because there's so much goodness in there we would never be able to get it all out but it's full it's replete with goodness and so we need to savor this goodness and delve into it and study it and look at the implications t for us so praise god let's pray dear heavenly father we do thank you for this story that is told through abraham and isaac and of course, Lord, it tells of the much bigger story of you giving your son, your only begotten son, because you loved the world so much. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. And we thank you for the willingness of Christ and the obedience we see in Jesus the willingness, not my will, but your will be done. Thank you, Father. And we pray, Lord, oh God, that we may have that same obedience in our lives. Help us, Lord, to say not as we will, but as you will. And Lord, I do pray that you'll be with those who are going through a trial at the moment. Lord, I, I pray for Merv Lewis, who needs your help. Um, for Francis Moran, be with the Lord. And, uh, uh, sorry, Francis Morris, be with Francis Moran as well, Lord. But um, Francis Morris, I meant. Lord, she needs you in a special way, I pray. And also for Gary Thompson, Lord, be with our brother Gary. He's such a blessing to us all. Minister to him, Lord Jesus, I pray. Shine your light upon him. And, Lord, uh, we pray for Matt McGee. Please be with Matt in Australia. He needs your healing hand upon him, Father. Please help him, we ask. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Last Sunday we had Simon speaking on Zoom about the name names of the Lord. It was good because he linked it to Psalm 23. That was such a great study and thoughts there. So please join us next Sunday on Zoom where Simon will continue the part two. I'm, I'm sure that it will be an encouragement to us all. And on Friday, we have the second part of uh, Temptation, the panel, um, with uh, Mary, Malcolm and Ray. So that will be good too. That was uh, 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 good to hear about these temptations that we face because we pray, lead me not into temptation, don't we? It's important that we know where are these temptations coming from. And, and the, the Bible says don't be um, unaware of the devil's devices. And that's important for us to know. So the Lord is moving among us. Oh, and on um, today's thought for the day, uh, Catherine Waithanji has written about, "Do not let your hearts be troubled." That's the scripture. So the the Lord's speaking to us here. So have a great day, and we'll be um, ministering through the Holy Spirit each other have something to say on living stones 
throughout the rest of the week and I'll see you on Sunday uh, for at nine o'clock British summer time and um, we'll do Abraham 26 so have a great day God bless you all